When I was growing up in Laguna, the tide pools were my playground. After school, I'd take long walks on the beach. I'd go down to the tide pools and look for shells. Sometimes I'd find the big abalone shells, even 10 to 12 inches across. And uh, the animals were real plentiful at that time. The cowries, the sea urchins, sea anemones. And I thought they were always going to be there like that. But what I've noticed in the years since that time is there's been a tremendous decrease in the number of animals in the tide pools and a corresponding increase in the number of people that have been impacting the tide pools. Okay, it's time to go down to the tide pool. Oh, boy! If you go down to the ocean, ocean? down by some rocky shore, when the tide goes out, you'll be dancing dance. like you never, never danced before. Out the river, sea star. Walk on hollow feet. Anemones are waving their tentacles. Scorpions are looking for something to eat. Yes. Do the tide pool boogie. Listen to that ocean beat. Snap the beat. Do the tide pool boogie. Tide pools a rich, complex ecosystem teeming with life. This area, where the land and the sea meet, can be found at rocky coastlines throughout the world. Due to the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon on the Earth, in California, there are two high tides and two low tides each day. It is during these low tides that a miniature world filled with an enormous amount of life is uncovered. Life in the tide pool is a constant struggle against crashing waves, the hot sun, and the ever-changing weather. Competing for limited space and against each other, tide pool life relentlessly marches forward to the rhythm of the ocean. Ultimately, all of the species that live in the tide pools depend on one another, primarily as predator and prey. So if one animal disappears from this fragile ecosystem, other animals are likely to be affected. As if this daily grind against nature wasn't enough stress for the tide pool animals, recently, another more serious problem has arisen. As more and more people move near the coast, the animals must now struggle to protect themselves against the activities of a growing human population. Some of the major problems include storm drain runoff, sewage discharge, air pollution, and oil spills which flow into coastal waters. And although these problems are having a serious impact on tide pool ecosystems throughout the state, research by California State University Fullerton and the University of Southern California Sea Grant Program has focused attention on the effects of humans and their increasing demand for seaside recreation. There are a number of ways that the tide pools are impacted that people don't realize. Uh, trampling, collecting shells, even collecting animals. And the over-harvesting can have uh, tremendously devastating results for the whole tide pool community. There is a problem with collecting and I think that people come down here and they feel um, oftentimes that they can take things right out of the refuge um, to their homes for souvenirs or for food and that might be okay in a time when there are fewer people that inhabit our area but with so many people sharing this resource each one taking a shell or an animal um, what we're finding is that the animals in the refuges are, are becoming depleted. Hey, what are you doing? A tide pool rule is you can't take, like, if you think a shell is really pretty, it might be a home of a hermit crab. 
and so you shouldn't take anything. Like, you shouldn't take, like, stuff that's, like, really pretty. Even though you really want to take it, you can't take it. Um, you're not allowed to take any animals or shells from the beach because if you do, if you were to take shells, for instance, that would be another animal's home and they need their special habitat to live here. Collecting tide pool animals isn't the only problem. Almost everyone wants to get a closer look, but when animals are picked up and not put back in the same place, they often die. Many species like sea anemones and sea hares who don't move very quickly, may be poked and prodded, which might actually kill them. When rocks are overturned and not replaced, the animals who live either attached or underneath the rocks are left to dry out in the sun. One of the rules of the tide pools is you can't poke the sea anemones because they'll suck your finger in. You shouldn't pick up the sea slugs because when you, if you squeeze them too hard, they'll squirt out purple stuff at you, and it's like their protection to warn you to stay away from them and put them down. We can't run on the rocks so we don't smush the tide pool animals. Keep the habitats clean. Some ways to keep our tide pools alive. Please notify your park rangers if your class is going to the tide pool. We are actually loving them to death. Because in a year, over 100,000 kids come to tide pools in Orange County. So keep everything here, but take the trash. Keep, keep our beaches clean. Each spring, the tide pools of Orange County are overrun with school groups. Now, one of the more important animals that lives in these tide pools is the California mussel. In order to provide students with a quality experience, the city of Newport Beach has limited the number of people allowed each day on scheduled field trips. What was happening was the location was being loved to death. It was one of those areas where the tide pools were really beautiful, they were fairly pristine, uh, and uh, we got the word out to the school groups of what was there, and as a result, we kind of oversold the place, and we were having as many as 2,000 kids a day. Normally, the problem that we have is a lot of groups come down on their own. It's still a public beach. You don't have to make an appointment with the city for a tour. But the thing that's good about making a tour is that we sit down, we talk to the kids, we explain to them not to be walking in the water, stay up on the large rocks, and how to look for animals not to step on them. The groups that come down on their own don't always get that education before they get here, and uh, they tend to be all over the place, and we have a tough time. Too many students exploring at one time may limit the opportunity of observing these animals in their habitat. 